In this series of videos, we're going to take a look at ZBrush and we're going to take a look at some different uh, basic kind of functions within the program to get you quickly up to speed with how to use this program, how to be sculpting, how to be making uh, some different kind of shapes, and to make some digital sculpture. So let's go ahead and get started. So let's go ahead and talk about the ZBrush interface. So the first thing you're probably going to notice is that this light box comes up and if you click this button here, hover your cursor over it and you can see that the hot key for that is the comma key. Just like a lot of things inside the interface, if there's a hot key associated with it, if you just hover your cursor over it, it'll tell you what those hot keys are. So let's go ahead and hit the comma key again, go ahead and pull this up. So within here in the light box, there's areas for recent projects, for projects that you can kind of start off with. And you can see like here, if I double click on one of this Dynamesh spheres and uh, do that, it's gonna go ahead and load this thing up for me automatically, right? So that's kind of how these projects work. If you want to add a tool to a current project that you have open, you can double click that and you can load that tool within there. So you can see that now we have the sphere and we also have this model here for the human model as well. So I'm going to go back to this project and I'm just going to double click the Dynamesh sphere. I kind of like using this one to kind of start off with. It usually fills up the screen pretty good. Uh, the grid's kind of turned on, gives you this uh, sphere to kind of start working with, and it puts your camera in a mode where if we just click and drag, you can see um, we've got the uh, floor turned on, which is basically our grid, and it gives us this uh, positive X direction and positive Z direction with this little red indicator and blue indicator, because it might be a little bit hard to understand like what you're looking at with the sphere. Um, usually I'll just take a little mark and kind of put it on the model like this, and that lets me know that this is going to be like the left side and this is the right side. This is the front of the model that you see here. And uh, like this would be the side of the model that you got, right? So if we're making a little face here, we can do something like that, right? And um, so continue on with this interface. We'll have comic key will stay in the light box for just a little bit longer. Uh, we talked about tools. There's also additional brushes that you see within here. And there could be um, a folder structure. If you go in the folder structure, then it's going to have multiple brushes within there. You can see we've got textures. We've got alphas. We've got different materials that might be on there. There's not tons of stuff that are in there for materials. There's some different noise for noise makers, fibers, array meshes, uh, some different grids for setting up uh, image planes and stuff like that, uh, documents, and also quick save. So if you do a quick save and just click the button up here, or if it's on this auto thing for quick saves, you can see that uh, there'll be different uh, versions of the quick save that would be on here. So uh, I think this might be the last quick save that I kind of had on there for a different uh, project that I was kind of working on. But you can see it saves it as the entire uh, project at that point, which is kind of nice. So anytime you're working, if you just really want to just do a quick save like that, save it real quick, hit the comma key to bring this up, you can go to quick save and you can see that it should save this as the latest quick save underscore three, you know, it's going to give it a number. So, um, but usually visually you can kind of tell uh, what it is that you're kind of working with with the quick saves in there. So I'm going to hit the comma key and close that and then uh, we'll continue on with the interface. Now I've got my own custom interface that I use quite a bit, these different brushes and different uh, tools and things like that that I always want access to. Um, you can actually get that interface if you just do a search for Nick, N-I-C-K, Z-U-C-C, and then go to Gumroad. You, know, you should be able to find that uh, custom ZBrush interface. Um, I'm going to show you here. We can actually go through different colors for the interface. I like the default uh, personally. Um, you can also click through here and load up previous interfaces. And while we do that, you can see that over here it's going to tell you what these are. So this is the ZBrush Minimal. This is Legacy. Um, four or eight uh, default. Uh, so let's just leave it on the default um uh, setting here for the interface, right? Um, we've also got this ability with the see-through, if you want to see images that are on your desktop, uh, say you've got uh, an image on the net and you kind of have that back behind the program and you can want to see that kind of quickly, you can do uh, something like that, right? Um, and as we rotate around, um, we'll get into navigation a little later, but if you zoom in really close, this is a thing with the interface, this open area still acts as if it's the open viewport. So if I click and drag that, I can rotate and I can still kind of zoom in and out. And then that way, if anything fills up the, uh, the entire screen, I don't have to worry about that for that. Okay, these little arrows here, it used to be you can just click it. Now you gotta double click them and it can open and close these. So if I wanna open this area to the left, I just double click this and open that area as well. 
and um, at the top we've got alphas, brushes, colors, documents, draw, uh, edit, all these different menus. So each one is going to do a different thing, obviously. I wouldn't be too concerned about everything just right yet. The one that you're really going to care about is tool, and if you click on any of these, you take this little power icon thing or whatever and click and drag it, you can dock it to the left. And if you want to click and drag that thing out, you can dock it to the right. Um, something else about the interface, if you click and drag, you can kind of scroll through these. If you click the uh, the name, it opens up that particular area for the interface. If you want to have multiple pieces open, so say I want subtool open and I want geometry open, if I hold down shift, I can click on that and I can open it up multiple uh, pieces within here, just like that. Um, on here, you can see under subtool, let's talk about this real quick for the interface. Subtools are the pieces that make up your uh, model that you have here. You can do solo, so I can just solo it on, uh, you can see I've got this highlighted and it's uh, selected, so that's the body. I can rename this to something like body, like that, right? And maybe these are my eyes, and I'll just rename these eyes like that. And as I select these, the reason why I only see one at a time, I have it on this solo. So it's just going to let me see that one particular thing at a time. Um, but it's really easy to take something, and if you're under the um, subtool area, if you want, you can just say duplicate. And I just duplicated the body, and then now I can take that body, and I can move it up, and I can move this thing out like this or whatever. So if I wanted a uh, sea turtle with two shells and a bunch of fins and stuff like that, um, I could quickly do something like that. I wouldn't really recommend it. It looks kind of ugly. But anyways, I just want to kind of show you that and you can kind of delete items and stuff like that. So that's more kind of an object level. And each one of these objects, as you select them, if you go under like geometry, all these different uh, things in the menu, they now start to work with that one particular subtool that you have. So if I went to deformation and I did something like um, a bend uh, deformer like that, you can see it's only working on just that one subtool. It's not affecting the eyes. So that can be a good thing. It can be um, maybe a, uh, a thing that you're not super happy about, but they've kind of put some tools within here. While we're talking about the interface and how some tools work, I think you can see if you go up to move, move scale, and rotate, and you have uh, this Gizmo 3D on, then you can see that you've got a, a manipulator that you can kind of move. You can uh, rotate and you can do scaling with this thing all like that right um, if you wanted to do scaling moving and rotating with all the pieces that you have all your sub tools you just click this little guy here and you can kind of zoom this in and out for scaling uh, you can do a particular axis scaling like this if you wanted uh, you could rotate the the whole thing like that as well um, and we'll put it back on draw um, something else about the interface, uh, ZBrush when it first started off was a 2.5D program uh, that would allow you to uh, paint with depth information. So what does that mean? If we took it off this edit mode that we're in this, uh, our cursor is red, uh, if you ever see your cursor turn white and you start drawing out these multiple kind of copies of whatever your brush is that you have, um, this could be kind of cool for doing maybe some illustration stuff or whatever, but um, if not, you might be going, what the heck is going on here, right? So this is this, you've accidentally dropped your model into this uh, 2.5D mode, and if your cursor is ever white, it's not a big deal. Uh, if you want to clear the canvas, if we go to layer and we say clear, you can see the hot key for that. It doesn't show it is a control N. And that'll clear. And you are just click and drag out like one copy. And you can go back up to edit or you can tap T. And you can see your cursor turns red. Um, you might be in a situation like this where you're like, OK, I've got a bunch of stuff on here. I'll draw out another copy, hit edit. And then now that becomes the live version. And if you want to clear that out, it's, again, so go to layer. We say clear. We can hit control N to clear that out. So right off the bat, I hope that's one thing that you learn because uh, everybody kind of hits that and it kind of freaks everybody out quite a bit um, at the very beginning. So just want to make sure you kind of hit that, right? Uh, other thing is if you want to do this BPR, it's really easy to click that and you can do a, what's called best possible render. There are some settings in there obviously to tweak this stuff, but if you just want to kind of get a nice little render for that, you can click that. We can turn on and off perspective on here for things. Um, we can also turn on and off our floor. So you can see we've got a grid 
that we got going on there for this. It's kind of hard to see maybe with these uh, colors for the background that I chose. Um, we also have a uh, local mode. That's just if you tap on here, you can see now I can tap and I can kind of rotate uh, this thing um, around. And this becomes the new pivot point for where um, you know the camera rotation happens for this. Um, if we do this in frame, we can always do this where we tap F and it'll frame on the object like that. Now it is possible um, when we took a, take a look at navigation, you can move so it's panning. You can do a zoom uh, 3D, which is really uh, zooming in and out. And there's also a rotate. So that's possible to use. If you turn this on, this is going to show you the uh, polyframe information. So this shows you uh, what the geometry actually looks like. So with these, this method that I'm using called Dynamesh, it's really, really dense. Um, so uh, you're just seeing all the different polygons on there. They've got some stuff for transparency. If you want to make something look uh, transparent for that particular piece, um, sometimes that comes in handy. Um, you'll kind of have to investigate that a little bit later as you start to sculpt, right? Uh, we also have some stuff up here for MRGB, so that's materials and red, uh, green, and blue for color. So if you want to do paint materials and color at the same time, you would turn this on. If you want to turn on just painting color, you can do that, or painting on materials. This is Z-Add. As we get into sculpting, we'll talk a little bit more about um, you know Z-Add and Z-Subtract, but that's basically adding to the surface, or if you hold down Alt, you can take away from the surface, which temporarily turns on that, and then there's smoothing. So we'll, we'll get into that more. We also have our different brushes that you see here. So if you tap B, your brush menu can come up anywhere, or you can click here like this. And then ZBrush has got this really cool system where if you're trying to find something like, I'll just do Trim, and I'll tap T, and then I'll show you all the different brushes that start with T. And then I can do a, maybe a trim dynamic or something like that with this uh, brush here. But that's an easy way to kind of get to that brush. It'll show you the brush type. Here's the different stroke types that you've got here. Uh, and as we get into sculpting, we'll probably talk about this more. Alpha shapes, uh, that'll control the sh shape of the actual brush that you're using. And then if you actually have a texture on. Then we also have this thing for uh, materials. So if you wanted to change the material of uh, what this thing looks like, it's possible for you to uh, change that material. I kind of like using um, this matte cap gray and I think this works really well for uh, just sculpting on and again if you double click on here you can open up or close these uh, pieces within here if you hit tab it will hide some of the interface so if you wanted to get and maximize as much of the interface as you possibly could you could do it that way something else about the document uh, while we're talking about interface is if we go to document um, there's this proportion button if you want to keep the proportions of what is shown here for that you could do that or you can turn this off and you could do something uh, like this where uh, you could say a very specific size for your document and I can say resize and I'll say would you uh, like to resize is undoable yeah we'll just go ahead and do that and here's where it gets maybe a little tricky for people uh, here's the interface and it is um, my cursor's turned white, right? Um, remember, if we hit Control N to clear that out, draw a copy, and then hit T, that puts us back into that edit mode. So basically, what I've done with the uh, interface at that point is, um, you know, I've taken my document and I've made it a very specific size, and then now the document is this size within here. What it's telling you about the interface is, we see these lines here. Uh, if I click and drag anywhere within there, I still have access to being able to rotate the screen and things like that. So we've got a color picker within over here, and um, I think this is probably going to give you everything that you need for the very beginning of just at least understanding uh, the interface. So next we'll get into actually starting to sculpt with this thing.